Hello everybody and welcome back to Screen Stars and welcome to another PlayStation 4 review. Today's review is for Watch Dogs Legion, the third game in the series of Watch Dogs games and it's a game that I've actually been quite anticipating. Um, I am, my, my history with the Watch Dogs games um, is a little bit mixed. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the first one. I found it a little bit dull if I'm honest, the first Watch Dogs game. However, Watch Dogs 2, I really, really enjoyed that game. Uh, it was one of the earliest reviews I ever did on this channel when it was released. Um, and I just really, really enjoyed that game. I thought it was a great sandbox. I had a lot of fun in that game. So I've been looking forward to Watch Dogs Legion only because of Watch Dogs 2. And then when I learned more about this game and this new mechanic that Ubisoft were implementing into it, which is essentially where you can... Um, be anybody in the game you could choose any character in the game recruit them and they can be become a member of DeadSec I was initially I was a bit like there's no way they can do that how are they going to do that and then leading up to this game's release the more stuff I saw I thought well they've done it they've absolutely done it now this game heavily relies on that mechanic um, I'm not gonna lie here so if you're used to having a central hero protagonist in this in a game um, you might not like this game as much maybe as Watch Dogs 2 because there is no central character here there's no central protagonist um, the characters in this game are varied and they are who you choose so when you initially start the game I mean you initially are given the option when the game starts if you want permadeath on or off um, and that will uh, alter the game depending on how you want to play if you have permadeath on kind of speaks for itself when you lose one of your characters that's it the dead for good with permadeath off they will either go to jail or they will be in hospital for a certain amount of time and you can't use them for a while so depending on your playstyle you choose whichever you want to go with I chose permadeath off certainly for my first playthrough um, and then you are given after a, a pretty decent opening cutscene that puts you in the picture the game is set in a near dystopian future in London if you like a, a, post, -pre a post Brexit and presumably post pandemic future London has changed it's under authoritarian rule there's a private military organisation that's running the streets and DedSec has been framed for a number of bombings so you have to basically re recruit again at, in DedSec from the ground up using normal people off the streets of London so you are initially given the option of choosing your character and initially I think it's about 10 maybe characters to choose from they've all got different traits and things the first character I chose was I thought it looked a bit like Idris Elba so I thought well that'll do and then I was dismayed to find out he had an Irish accent when he, when the game started but hey ho um, and then after that you were, you were set loose upon the city of London you have to do a number of missions um, and along the way you are you have got the ability to scan people as you did in the last game you remember you could check your, your phone and look at people and see what skills they had and things like that and uh, if you could rob money off them and things well this time you can see what they do for a living and whether they you think they might be useful to dead sec um, and, but you can literally recruit anyone if you wanted to recruit an army of grannies you can do it if you wanted to recruit, re recruit an army of homeless people you can do it um, the game will nudge you in certain directions in regards to um, characters to recruit. You know, there'll be certain missions when they'll say, um, "Go and recruit this guy," uh, "Go and recruit this guy," or you'll you'll do like underground fighting uh, rings, um, and you're given the option if you win uh, to add some of those to your recruiting list. So it does nudge you in certain directions because there are some characters that will make certain missions easier. For example, if you need to get in a construction site, a construction worker will blend right in. Uh, things like that. Um, so it will it will nudge you in certain directions the game sometimes, but that doesn't change the fact that you can recruit literally anyone that you scan. And all you do is scan them if you want to recruit them. Um, you can either go up and talk to them immediately and then you'll start a recruitment mission for them. Um, which can vary from a number of things. But generally speaking, it's if you do this for me, 
I will join dead set kind of thing you scratch my back I'll scratch yours um, so you'll go off and do these little missions for them and then they will join dead sec and then you can switch characters to them whenever you want in the game um, which I thought I, easily is the best part of this game it's a huge amount of fun you will find yourself literally wandering around the streets for hours just scanning people just scanning people oh that's interesting you know and occasionally you find a bouncer you think well he's gonna be good at fighting and then you'll find um, a paramedic you think well they'll be good medical then you'll find uh, the first person I actually recruited was a war correspondent. She was an elderly woman, a war correspondent, and this is her. You can see on screen now. Um, I recruited her first because I thought her skills would have been really, really useful. She had some really interesting skills, war correspondent. Um, she was actually really physically fit and things like that. And I thought, oh well, yeah, we need a veteran on the team, so I, I recruited her first. Um, but that's the fun of this game. Uh, no two people's playthrough on this game is really going to be the same because everybody's going to have different teams everyone's going to have different members of dead set everyone's going to have different skill sets and the usual ubisoft approach here of being able to complete a mission how you choose makes more sense in this game than in any other ubisoft game because you 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 can start a mission um as a little old granny and that they're probably going to get taken down not always i mean some people you can scan have got hiccups or flatulence <laughs> so they will fight um without control during a mission so they'll give the position away i mean it's hilarious at times this game um so the freedom to complete missions is really up to do you can go in all guns blazing if you want with your spy or your army guy whatever or you can sneak in using um, other methods using your hacker um, whatever the, the choice is up to you how you want to approach missions and it gives you that opportunity to go in quietly and stealthily or to go in all guns blazing which I really really love that freedom in an open world game now it's not all positives here I'll be honest it's not all positives the, the, there's load screens that are long and frequent um, and hopefully when you be able to play this on PS5 those load screens will be much shorter or non-existent be due to the nature of the game it ha you know the fact that anyone can be a character in the game um, the voice acting at times feels a little bit robotic and the lip syncing is terrible amongst the worst I've seen in a game but you can understand it because of what they've tried to do here there are other mechanics you will immediately recognize from other Ubisoft games um, like the um, reconstruction of site, scenes at sites, things like that um, you know the usual go to this place um, uh, do this thing and you'll make this area more uh, better for your team if you like that sort of it, it, basically if you're a veteran of Ubisoft games it will feel immediately comfortable to you the shooting is what you would expect from a Ubisoft game. It's nothing different than what really I've experienced. It's it's functional, and that's about it. But it, it does its job. There is hand to hand in the game. Now, while the punches and kicks feel quite impactful, it's also quite repetitive and quite easy, uh, which is a little bit of a shame. But it's still pretty decently done. The driving is absolutely fine. I think I think the driving is actually improved on other. Um, certainly watch dog games that I've played and probably other recent ones like um, you know the breakpoint games the driving I think is pretty good in the cars and bikes um, so no problem there um, you've got your usual puzzles if you know if you played watch dog dodge game watch dogs games there's like environmental puzzles where you've got to kind of hack systems and move this to there to unlock this that type of thing um, they're okay but you can actually simplify puzzles if you're not into that sort of thing in the menus to make them a bit easier there's obviously different difficulty levels easy medium and hard depending on your play style um, I've seen some reviews where some people have complained about the fact that there's not much to do in the open world I don't mind that it keeps you focused the main activity that they obviously want you to be doing is to be looking for people to add to your team and walking around I mean, and that will take up a lot of your time just walking around having fun with that you see some really weird characters um, and that is a real distraction but other than that you've got things like delivery missions you can play 
football but it's not really football it's it's kicky upsies darts in pubs you can have a pint in a pub and get drunk and obviously you can go to shops and buy clothes for your team members that kind of stuff all them sort of things are there but the main idea of the game is to follow the missions um, recruit people and go to different districts and raise the awareness of dead sect in each of them system and them districts so that the residents there will be sympathetic to dead sect and be on your side that's the main idea of the game and it keeps it pretty focused i think i don't like open world games that are really distracting and you're spending literally 10 or 12 hours doing taxi missions or whatever you know what i mean i mean i've only briefly touched on the delivery missions on this and played darts and played football once or twice i'm not interested in that really in this game it's a nice little thing but i'm far more interested in doing the central core story and the other little missions in the districts thank you very much uh, there is radio as well in the vehicles i think it's pretty poor if i'm honest the radio uh, it keeps repeating the same stuff over and over and generally speaking after a couple of hours you've heard everything less than that and then I just kind of turned it off to be honest I think it got on my nerves after a bit um, so I'm really enjoying this game I'm not going to lie um, and this new mechanic they've put in I think is, is going to be copied and pro maybe perfected by other games companies going forward um, but I think Ubisoft here has done something really, really brilliant with this franchise. Um, I can't see it doing anything differently going forward with having this option to recruit anybody. Um, it's really, really fun. I'm really enjoying Watch Dogs 2. Um, and if it's something you've had doubts about, it is worth picking up, I would suggest. It's a really, really fun game. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I'm not going to lie, I'm having loads of fun with it. I'm sure there's going to be many people out there who are going to hate on it. It's Ubisoft. Yes, there's microtransaction. Yes, there's a storefront if you want to make the game easier or buy your own recruits. Why would you? But the option is there. Um, a lot of people obviously hate that in things like Ubisoft games. And I'm not here to advocate for microtransactions. They're there if you want to do it. They're a little bit real back in after the backlash they got for breakpoint but they are there don't spend money in there. if you don't spend money in there they won't put them in there i'm not going to uh, but I'm, just, I'm here to tell you that there are some microtransactions so yeah other than that there's a lot of familiarity here if you've played watchdogs 2 certainly and other ubisoft games but this new mechanic they've added in has freshened it right up and it looks beautiful as well game and the city of london looks fantastic so i'm having a ball in this game so i hope if you get it you do too so thank you very much for watching everybody i will of course be back with more content and reviews on screen stars very very soon